Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, we have a roll call tonight, um, or this afternoon, and Mary France is missing. Uh, other, all other board members are here. Uh, do I have an approval uh, for the agenda as listed? So moved. By Michael, second by Jonathan. All those in favor say aye. 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 That passes 6-0. The first item up is um, the resolution for the health and safety measures for 2021-22. Dr. Sala. Great. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, board members. Thank you for coming together today to take action on the health and safety measures resolution that provides an update to our safe learning plan and directs me to ensure that we continue to monitor data and adjust the plan as needed throughout the year. We engaged in a robust discussion on Monday night about the masking requirements, including the presentation of a matrix, um, which was a, a request of the board. There's some noise. Can we just shut the door? Yep. Yeah. Can we just shut the door? There's. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no worries. Um, as I said, we had a presentation which included um, the decision-making matrix that was requested by the board. As we reviewed the matrix, board members determined that given the current conditions, we will start the year requiring masks for all students, staff, and visitors in our schools age two and over through eighth grade. We will continue to recommend masking for all students, staff, and visitors in grades nine through 12. Pending board approval, the language will be um, immediately updated on our website to indicate the change in the safe learning plan, and communication will be sent out today to all staff and families. The decision-making matrix will be used by the COVID-19 Incident Command Team as part of a weekly comprehensive data monitoring system to guide decisions and to determine when adjustments to the safe learning plan need to be made. We know how quickly things can change, and that is why we are committed to continuing to meet weekly with Scott County Public Health and why have we have convened our Prior Lake Savage Area Schools COVID-19 Incident Command Team to continue to meet weekly so that we can be responsive and adjust our plans um, as warranted. On Monday night when presenting the decision-making matrix, we discussed using the Scott County 14-day average case rates as we did throughout the year last year. However, in the presentation, it did have seven-day averages. So I'll be updating the presentation um, from Monday night to represent that 14-day average case rate. Um, before the board discussion, I'd like to again thank stakeholders for sharing their experiences as, and perspectives. I've read all the emails and I want to verbally address a few questions I've received and provide some clear messages. There have been emails requesting an answer to questions about who is funding the mask mandate and the weekly testing recommendations. The answer is there is no funding that we receive regarding masking and testing. Included in these emails are comments suggesting that since our decision-making matrix is similar to other districts, that there is funding driving this. First of all, board members, you know more than anyone that superintendents across the metro uh, and in Scott County and Dakota County have been meeting weekly for almost two years as we navigate this pandemic, and we have consistently shared information as we collaborate together on best practice so that we can collectively serve our kids. Ideas, input, and suggestions about a decision-making matrix have been shared among many school districts over the past several weeks as they have been developed by each district's team. In terms of funding, the district does not receive funds due to a mask requirement. We have received federal funds that may be used to purchase masks, but this is not a requirement to receive federal funding. We receive no funding regarding ILI cases. MDE, Minnesota Department of Education, has grants available to districts to support COVID-19 testing. And as we shared on Monday night, at this time, we are not pursuing testing 
in our schools. Board members, with that clarification and answer, and at this time, I seek your action on the resolution that is in front of you. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to ask Michael to read the resolution um, as stated. School Board Resolution PLSAS Health and Safety Measures for the 2021 2022 school year. Whereas Minnesota Statutes Section 123B.09 vests the care, management, and control of independent districts in the school board, and whereas the Superintendent of Independent School District 719, here and after the Superintendent, is responsible for the management of the schools, the administration of all school district policies, and is directly accountable to the school board, and whereas when responsibilities are not specifically prescribed nor school district policy applicable, the superintendent shall use personal and professional judgment subject to review by the school board pursuant to school board district policy 302 superintendent. And whereas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and the Minnesota Department of Health, MDH, have determined that the COVID-19 pandemic is currently ongoing and may remain ongoing for an unknown time. And whereas the Minnesota Department of Education, MDE, has issued and may continue to issue written guidance for Minnesota schools on educational issues related to COVID-19. And whereas the MDH has issued and may continue to issue written guidance for Minnesota schools on public health issues related to COVID-19. And whereas, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the superintendent and the administration of the school district have conferred with the school board regarding COVID-19 health and safety measures, the current CDC, MDE, and MDH requirements for each, and other relevant information. And whereas, based upon the collective consideration of these factors, the superintendent has recommended the school board that the following Prior Lake Savage Area Schools COVID-19 Safe Learning Plan be implemented beginning on August 25th in preparation for the 2021-2022 school year. Not therefore be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 719 as follows. Section 1. The superintendent is hereby directed to implement the PLSAS safe learning plan to open the 2021-22 school year. As circumstances warrant and guidance from the CDC, MDH, MDE change, the school board authorizes the superintendent to adjust those mitigation measures as needed. Section 2, the superintendent is hereby authorized after consultation with the school board chair and notification to the school board to select and implement different health and safety measures for the school district or any specific school buildings without school board action if the superintendent reasonably believes that prompt implementation of different health and safety measures is necessary and that constraints of time and public health considerations render it impractical to hold a school board meeting to approve the implementation. The health and safety measures selected and implemented by the superintendent shall continue in effect unless and until the school board in consultation with the superintendent and appropriate school district staff and public health officials deems it in the best interest of the school district and its students to implement different health and safety measures. Section 3, the superintendent will provide regular updates to the school board regarding the school district's efforts to implement COVID-19 related educational and public health guidance issued by the MDE and the MDH respectively. Okay, um, with that, um, for this uh, vote, it'll be a roll call vote. First we need a motion. motion. Yep, and I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. By Jonathan, um, any questions or comments? I had a question about exemptions. Kind of if we could get a little more detail around that topic. Okay. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Beginning last year, we did allow for medical exemptions by uh, to be signed by a medical provider. This year, we will just um, continue to use that same form and would ask that it be updated annually. So if it was signed last October, we would ask that it was signed again by your um, medical provider um, within a year. Any other questions, comments? Um, I'll just make a comment. Um, you know, the last two board meetings, we obviously had a lot of discussion and struggle with this decision. I think the hope has always been that we would have a normal start 
um, to the fall of 2021. And in all intents and purposes, this is. This is a start um, where our focus is going to be continuing to have five days a week in-person learning. That's what our families, our teachers, our administrators, our community want. And we want that to continue throughout this year. And we have a process in place that has served us over the last 18 months and will continue to use this to recommend changes to ensure that we have the safety and health of all of our almost 8,000 students that we serve each and every day. And uh, with our weekly incident commands, as Dr. Stalo stated, we're going to continue to drill down at a local level and use, um, use our data in our schools and in our communities to determine you know, the spread and the outcomes and, and what we need to do to change things. Um, so you know, we're really excited. We're excited in the sense that we get our kids back five days a week. Um, it's been a long 18 months. We'd like to say it's all over, and we're hopeful that it is. And this is a step to get us there. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has any other comments. Jonathan? I'll just, um, I, I will reiterate a thank you for all the work. Um, and I would like to thank the community for all of the engagement. Um, this morning, I wrote in a gratitude journal that I am happy that I live in a community with people who get engaged on for their children, advocate for their children. Um, all the people in this room, the hundreds of emails on both sides. Um, I'm, I'm grateful the vast majority of that communication was um, constructive and respectful. Um, and I'm proud to be a part of this community and to serve this community. Um, I also believe that everyone on both sides in their hearts was advocating for what they believe is in the best interest of their own family and from their own life experience. And I respect that. I respect that from everyone. Um, at this table, we are tasked with a decision and there is not a choice that we're going to make everybody in our community happy. Um, but what I do think we are united around is five days a week of in-person learning. And I believe this approach gives us the best chance to deliver that for our students this year. Okay. Um, any other comments? With that, this is a roll call vote. Amy? Aye. Enrique? Aye. Julie? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Michael? Aye. Aye. That passes 6-0. Uh, next up is the approval for additional staffing for 21-22 licensed staff. Jim? Yeah, good afternoon, <clears throat> Chair, Board Member, Superintendent Stallo. Uh, we bring forward uh, the following additional staffing recommendation. This recommendation was reviewed by Julie Sink, Executive Director of Business Services for financial implications, and the funding for this these positions will come from COVID-19 relief dollars. It would be two FTE, one at the, uh, for classroom, one at the elementary, one at the secondary level, and a 0.5 FTE increase for a special education teacher. And the need for this additional FTE is necessary as the district's Laker online program enrollment surpassed the original enrollment projections and requires additional staffing allocation. So we bring that recommendation forward. Okay. Um. With that, do I have a motion to approve? So made. By Julie, second? Second. By Enrique, any questions, comments? I know this was at, discussed, Dr. Discussed Edwards. Discussed at the meeting. Edwards discussed this. Um, I know we talked about having some flexibility depending on, I don't know if you just want to address that one more time. Yes, uh, we are prepared uh, to communicate, as was stated earlier, around the safe learning plan uh, out to our parents here this afternoon and open a window of time for folks to uh, state their desires if they desire a change. That's how we are wording it. So they only need to uh, fill out the form if they are looking to change their uh, learning from either in-person to Laker Online or from Laker Online to in-person. And the window of time will be through the end of the day on Friday, end of the like 11.59 p.m. on Friday evening, so that we can then plan uh, accordingly uh, early next week and uh, additionally in the communication, we are adding at the elementary level that class lists will come out on Tuesday, uh, August 31st at 4 p.m. Um, 
allowing us time to make adjustments should we need to do so. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, any other questions? All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 6-0. And with that, that's the end of tonight's or this afternoon's agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So made. By Amy, second. Second. By Julie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 6 0. We're adjourned. <laughs>